Hello everybody and welcome to my spoiler free review of The Travelling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa. So, the past couple of videos that I've sort of filmed have been a couple of tag videos asking about, you know, a lot of them were asking, oh yeah, do you ever cry at books? And each time I have proudly said, no I never cry at books, the only time I've cried at a book was once at the book thief. And I have now cried twice at books and the second one is this. So this is a book that my sister bought me, um, like two years ago, maybe even three, for Christmas, and I just knew it was going to be emotional, so I've not read it for <laughs> but been put up. I've just been putting it off and putting it off because I'm just like, yeah, but it's gonna make me sad. And I was right, but it's also really happy and like, oh, this book's so good. So it's about, uh, it's the story of a man who takes in this stray cat after it gets hit by a car and its legs broken and stuff, so he takes it to the vet and obviously it needs to be looked after and it can't really be out and about with its like leg in a cast and stuff, so he looks after it and then once he's all healed and stuff, the cat kind of just decides, yeah, you know, I could go back to being a stray but this guy clearly loves me so I guess I'll stay, you know, in that true cat fashion. Um, and then, so they, so they live together for about five years and then all of a sudden the sort of man has to rehome the cat and you don't really know why. And it's a story of him sort of travelling up and down Japan to meet these friends that have reached out and said yes we will take the cat and um, you see through, through their point of view, the man's name is Satoru and you, you see from his friend's perspective, you know, how they met when they were kids, what happened with their friendship, you know, what these people think of Satoru as a child and now as a man. And you also get to the cat's point of view, which I love so much. The cat's called Nana and he's hilarious. Like, all his point of view are exactly what I expect my cats to be thinking, which is just very funny. I have three cats. Uh, you got Poppy and Lily, who live with my mum, and then Bella, who lives with my dad and torments the dog, the poor dog Hamish. And yeah, it was just really funny. A lot of just the stuff he's coming out with is just like, this is exactly what Lily thinks whenever I pick her up, isn't it? <laughs> and it's just, it's just the story of how, you know, he's, you know, he's driving in his van with this cat to where all his friends live and the cat really starting to enjoy sort of, you know, spending time with Satoru and enjoying just seeing all the sights, seeing Mount Fuji and all these sort of fields of flowers and the sea for the first time. And yeah, it was just a really, it was just such a gentle, book as well and it's so lovely and it's interesting you never actually see anything from Satoru's point of view you only ever see from the cat's point of view as well as then the three friends that he then goes to visit and then I believe there's also a segment of his aunt's point of view towards the end um, and you get his life story really from these friends and from the cat and you just you're able to understand sort of what kind of man he is as well as how he's perceived to be by other people I think it's interesting that you see you know how, how everyone else sees him but you never see what he thinks of himself or how he sees other people sort of thing. I thought that was just a really interesting thing that I didn't even really notice because he's very clearly, you know, one of the two main characters. Nana's the main character as is Satoru and you never actually see his point of view which I thought was interesting. There's a sort of interesting theme just about pets and how they understand more than we think and how they're sort of connected to their owners and the relationship that they have with them and um, you know, there's this dog at one point that really reflects what the, what his owner thinks of Satoru sort of thing, even though the owner has said to him to be like, you behave and be on his best behaviour, he still behaves in a way that sort of almost reflects this guy's opinion of Satoru sort of thing. Which is just, it's just an interesting idea, this is also the scene where um, Nana's talking to all these other different animals because um, he's having, they're on a ferry and he's having to put into the bit where all the pets have to sit and just like that little, that little chat that they all have with one another and things and just, I don't know, it's just, it's just such a lovely book. It is so good and I cried, I cried so much at this book but like it wasn't a sad book either, it was still uplifting and happy but there was some sad moments and Again, as I said, I thought the point of view thing was really interesting. I just, I loved Nana as a character and his inner monologue and then his attitude towards humans as he goes from being a stray to being taken in by Satoru and then needing to be rehomed and stuff. Like, yeah, it's just, this is a short review because there's not really much I can really say about this book. You know, it is a short book, but it's really just, it's just so lovely and gentle and heartwarming and I just love seeing the cat's opinions of like, 
you know, traveling and spending time with Satoru with the music on and what he thinks about different music tracks and stuff. And yeah, um, easily five out of five stars. I cannot recommend this enough. It's really just brilliant. But thank you so much for watching. Have you read The Traveling Cat Chronicles? What do you think? I believe it's to be made into a live action film in Japan. So I'll be very curious to see what happens with that. And I'll probably try and see if I can watch it. Uh, did you cry at this? Please let me know in the comments and feel free to give this video a like if you want, if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.